Don't miss Clownfish Studios' latest crowdfunder, Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Thaddeus Wendell's greatest treasure is out there, and it's up to young mage Crimson Wren and the crew of a rundown airship called the True North to find it. But will they find it in time? Crimson Wren of the True North is a race against the clock filled with action, adventure, comedy, and heart. This is a brand new manga-style graphic novel from Clownfish Studios. Go to crimsonwren.com or check it out on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. It ends on November 18th. That's November 18th. And now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkle. Hello. And we're gonna talk about the future of the CW. It looks like the future is gonna be very budget cut uh -huh. going forward. This is kind of like a coda for the CW. Of course, they've canceled a bunch of shows. The CW got sold to Nexstar for $0. So the CW is gonna be more budget cut than before? Yes, yeah. So it sounds like they're gonna pivot their programming to more uh, reality shows and, and budget they're shows. They're trying to pivot the profit. Pivot to profit, but we'll see, we'll see how this goes for them. Uh, unfortunately, some shows are gonna get caught up in the net. Uh, there's a lot of talk that Superman and Lois, which is one of the last holdouts of the uh, the Arrowverse, and a lot of people consider it to be the best show that they've done in the DC uh, universe. It's it's potentially gonna get canceled. It probably will get canceled. Mm -hmm. It's expensive, fish. Ish, for, Ish. for the CW. For the CW. So we're gonna talk about all this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. Over 280, almost 281,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, yeah, so we've been kind of following the debacle with the CW, and, and thank God, I don't think the Powerpuff Girls live action thing is still gonna happen. I hope not. That was a bad idea the whole way around. Nobody wants that. Not. I don't think anybody I've seen was like, yes, I can't wait for this. No, so there have been a lot of stories out here. Uh, we'll talk about, uh, this is one of the more recent ones, the CW. Uh, to shed Warner Brothers and Paramount content in 2023 to 2024. Warner Brothers content, of course, would be Superman. Superman. Oh, they, said they, they said they'd still, they, 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 those people are not precluded from selling them shows that they'll run on, on CW if they like the deal. If they like the deal, but that, that would assume that the CW wants to pay them a lot of money for their content, and I don't think they're gonna have the money to pay them. That would assume that the other places would take a, like a lower price for their content too. Right, right. Now there are, you know, um, cases, cause Warner Brothers, David Zaslav said he would absolutely positively whore out every piece of content except for their core IP. But you know, we have to wonder what's going on now with the DCEU and they might decide, hey, we're not doing anything DC on TV anymore until we figure out what we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, going forward. Um, so they said there might be some contractual holdovers and going forward, Warner and Paramount are not precluded from selling us programming. Uh, it's just gonna have to be a financial deal we like. And there may be a couple of shows that distinguish themselves this year we wanna hold over until next year. So basically the ones that are doing well, we'll probably, we might pay for those ones. To continue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the network's new entertainment chief, Brad Schwartz, is praised as a very gifted programming executive, a creative mind, a very creative deal maker with an eye for talent and also a cheap bastard. Yeah. Uh, the former head of Pop TV said, uh, I like the direction we're headed in. The goal is to cut costs and ultimately turn a profit. Yeah, remember, the CW is sold for zero dollars. But they still want to turn a profit. They still want to turn a profit, yeah. Um, CFO Lee Ann, is it Gleeha? I don't know. Gleeha, motherfuckers! Reiterated plans for a network to pull into the black by 2025. <gasps> oh. I know what that means, but people are going to be like, ah, oh, that's racist. She said Nexstar anticipates the CW will generate just under 70 million in revenue for the current fourth quarter. And we are executing on our synergies and setting up the right people in place. God, synergies. I had a quarter for trying to hear that. She added predicting incremental cost of low eight figure amount for restructuring changes in the quarter, apparently for severance. Oh. Because there has been dozens of layoffs in the network. Yeah. So um, this, is, uh, this is not a good sign for anything DC related, in my personal opinion. Um, now, this was a couple of weeks ago. It said that uh, affiliates and executives who do business with the CW are searching for answers. Signs are that Nexstar is aiming to be more affiliate friendly and schedule programming that targets a broad audience of 18 to 49. I thought it was like 
55 plus. Well, people that, said, though, they, they did say that. The reason was is because during the day, they have things like, you know, I don't know, like Judge Judy or something like that on. And a lot of the people that watch are older people. Yeah. But I, I, would, I would guess they'd actually probably go into the, lean into that more if that's their, their core audience. Yeah. Yeah, you would think. Um, so Superman and Lois did get a renewal. Uh, we don't know. We're going to talk more about that because the word is after this season, it's, it's pretty much done. Um, they talked about Pedowitz, who was in charge. Talks with Nexstar leadership went south over what some suggest were issues with his reporting structure and the direction they plan to take with the network. Basically, we're going to do everything on the cheap. Uh, this is the new guy, uh, Sook. This is Sook. Over time, we're going to be taking a different approach to our CW programming strategy and we'll leverage our experience in spending approximately $2 billion a year on programming, attracting and monetizing viewers. Um, but they said, yeah, they're looking at the age. They're looking to age up the CW from 18 to 34 and cut costs. So Lawrence Welk. What? Uh, no, they're going to do Walker. What? Walker. Uh, they're going to do you know, Walker's expensive. Uh, no, I think they're going to change everything. I think they're going to change it to be um, done on the cheap. They're going to change it to be uh, probably more like, you know, cop shows or dramas or something that old people like to watch in the background. I don't know. I mean, I think they're trying to—they're trying to skew young, but they're trying to skew—they're trying to go eighteen to forty-nine. Yeah. So they're trying to go from thirty-four to forty-nine. I mean, they said that they're keen on delivering more low-cost, unscripted, alternative programming. A Masters of Illusion, world's funniest animals. So basically, where somebody sends them clips. Yeah. Or somebody sends them camera comedies that are cheaper to make than single camera comedies. Um, where that leaves you know these other shows, all American. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, a lot of people watching this channel are going to care about the future of Superman and Lois. A lot of people think it's the best thing that the CW's ever That's produced. That's probably about the only thing they care about with CW. And it is good. I mean, what I've seen, I haven't watched uh, any of season two, actually, and I watched about half of season one. But what I saw of it, I was like, damn, they actually got Superman right. And then I kind of forgot about it because it went on a hiatus for a while. And it was like, oh, yeah, there's that Superman show. Yeah, okay. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's like I don't get invested in a lot of these shows because I'm like, are they going to cancel it? Or are they going to, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, CW. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a, a bitch. But for CW. Be a bitch. Be the bitch. Every time I see a show on CW, it's so trashy. I'm like, Nancy Drew. Why is Nancy Drew screwing people? What the hell? Have you read Nancy Drew? I mean, I don't know. You think this is going to be good and then it turns out to be like, it's like. Whatever the IP is, but then make it trashy. That's the CW. Well, I was like Archie. I mean, a freaking Archie Riverdale starts with Archie, you know, banging his teacher. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? She's like 75 in the comics. Well, not now. <sighs> we have to hit that 49 demographic. Got to tap that 49-year-old teacher. <laughs> um, so Superman and Lois is possibly next to be canceled at the CW. Again, they renewed it preemptively, but it's probably going to be uh, canceled. A lot of people saying it's going to be canceled. Um, so they said the Flash is ending its ninth season, and that's the uh, the last of the Arrowverse series that was left standing. And uh, Deadline reported the CW has new orders to not order additional episodes for even their latest series like Walker and the Winchesters, which is surprising as the latter is their most watched debut. Yeah, because that's like the I think it's the parents. Is it the you know? And, and that actually is interesting. I I had I have never watched Supernatural honestly. I, I think I seen a couple episodes. I was thinking about watching it. I, I was going to start watching it, and I saw that, and I thought, oh, that would be fun. Well, they canceled it. Yeah. <laughs> years ago. For now, yeah. Uh, if a new season is well received on the network, the CW could order additional episodes for that season. It seems like there will be no new episodes ordered for the two aforementioned series, so regardless of their eyes. World's funniest animals. <laughs> yes, right. Lots of animals, you know. Uh, red pandas are going to run red pandas. Yay. Turtles. Red, sea turtles. Turtles. Sea turtles and Cat red pandas. Dogs. Red, red pandas on sea turtles. Oh. Playing with dogs. And cats. And cats in the water. The dogs are doing better in the water than the cats. The cats don't like the water very much. Uh, no decisions have been made about the shows, which include Superman and Lois. Um, it was reported that this decision was made to cut back on costs. Uh, there can be only one. They're talking about how it's uh, very probable that with uh, you know James Gunn being in charge of the DCEU and Henry Cavill coming back, they might be like, yeah, let's not do Superman on TV. Well, then they're moving to the Flash in the films, too, even though that's a questionable decision. So I wonder yeah. if that has something to do with it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, because the Flash, you know, by the time the movie comes out, Flash is going to be off the air, right, I think. And they're probably going to do the same thing with Superman. Now, I don't think they're going to do a an MCU style thing where it's like, okay, well, the curtains have to match the drapes, you know, 
um, where the TV shows and the movies. I, but that was like, that was. I'm talking about hotel rooms. What are you talking about? I, I was like, what? But you know what I'm saying? Like the MCU, it's like, oh, the TV shows take place in the same universe until they don't. Uh, I don't think they're going to do that with DC, but I think they're going to probably want to keep their like marquee characters in theaters. Like, I mean, from a business perspective, you know, it's like, okay, why would you go to the theater to go see Superman when you get pretty good Superman every week on TV? Well, yeah, that's true. You know, and they might be like, well, we'll do that. We'll do the C and D list characters on TV. But if you want to go see Superman, you got to come to the theater. It's CW. CW. Well, this is this was apparently the reason that they they uh, kept Tom Welling out of the suit on Smallville until the very end because they had Superman Returns coming out and they're like we're not doing dueling Supermans. It's like you go to the theater, you see Superman. You can watch the Clark Kent stuff on on TV. But it was but pretty that's good. It. it was the first four seasons were pretty good. After that, and then Bloodstone got sent up in a cult. Yeah, she, she did. did. Sex cult. Yeah, that was I mean, if you're going to do a cult, that might be the way to go, but still, you know. She was, um, that was Allison Mack. And I, okay, so we have an Allison Mack story. Which one, the fact you had a crush on her? I didn't have a crush on her. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Eh. You don't want to admit to it because it's weird now. It's weird. It's really, it wasn't weird then. It's really you weird You totally now. did. No, Allison Mack, we saw her at, uh, I think it was Wizard World Philly. And we were at uh, a table in Artist Alley with some other cartoonists. And she walked by and they all started singing Somebody Save Me when she would walk by and she shot them the dirtiest look. You know, she was just like, you know, the way it works for me, boys, is you got to pay. You know, you got to pay if you want. Unless you join the cult. Unless you join the cult. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to wrap this up, I think. Uh, Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.